I don't want to wait in vain for your joint to come back to me. I don't want to wait in vain for my joint. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, oh, I don't want to wait in vain. Gue malu di situ. What did uh, you play? I can't sing it. I can't do it. Eh? You can't do your own music. You told me you're from Indonesia, but you can't, you cannot, you cannot even do your own music. Why? And here you here you can play African music, but you can't even do your. <laughs> this, this guy is crazy, and so they're all laughing at me. Everybody always used to say, oh, bullet, low, bullet, low, eh, bullet, low, bullet. So I always felt, yeah, gue ini bullet lah ya. Kalau di Indonesia jatuhnya, tapi orang Baduy nggak pernah ngomong gitu. They said, nggak, kamu manusia sama sama saya. And they said, telinga dua, mata dua, hidung satu, mulut wow. satu. And they they never said that you were a bully or you were this or that. They were, I felt, wow, these guys are so accepting and so they hmm. were so sweet. I wasn't about money. I just wanted to play what I liked. That's it. Hi, welcome to the Friday podcast. We've invited our guests to our home. Selatan gue dulu tinggalnya sih di seberang. Oh gitu. Ayamnya still cuil cuil gitu kan. To share the other side of every story. Itu luar biasa banget. Dan percaya bahwa rezeki gak pernah ketukar. Get ready, because we talk, you listen. Jimmy Aditya, thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, thank welcome you. to the Friday Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, E.S. Lawrence. Before we begin, yeah, today's a big deal for me. And uh, I'll tell you why. It's your birthday. Happy no, no, birthday. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> uh, the year was 2008. Let me let me go back a little bit. 2008. 2008. Rewind. <laughs> I was either 11 or 12. <laughs> Rewind. All right. Are we there yet? Yeah. Okay, we're there. You were uh, 11 or 12? I was 11 or 12. In what year again? 2008. 2008. 11 and 12. Are you okay. doing your maths now? You're, yeah, you're you're younger than me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I'm thinking you're younger. Yeah. Yeah. So I begged my mother. Uh, yeah, my mother. And I said to her, I wanted to watch this concert. It was Akon. Lonely. Oh. Uh, it was back then. Um, I said, I wanted to yeah. watch Akon. You know, I was upset about Akon. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, I, I just... Why, why were you upset? Man? Cause my, because of Akon, my kids were walking around, the, walking around the house like little kids, <laughs> like little three, four-year-olds yeah. were going, I want to fuck you, fuck you, out on the floor. I, fuck. I was like, fuck yeah. this Akon guy, man. <laughs> but that, but that, was, that was the jam then. Yeah. Um, so I said, I, I begged her. She said, no, you can't go. Because you're still young, you, you can't go. I said, okay, what if I go with an adult? She said, yes, okay. My uh, a friend of hers would take me there. I watch think your mom didn't know about the fun no, she didn't lyrics. know. She didn't know that. Yeah. She only knew about the lonely. I'm so lonely. Shit. So that was okay. Um, lonely, I'm so lonely. <laughs> exactly. So there we were. Um, we were too early, um, and we went to a hall, and then there was like. There was a music with Al Green, um, and, and I saw. Ooh, Al Green. And Now you're talking. It was you. Huh? It was you singing. Oh. It was Soul Nation. Oh. Soul Nation 2008. And then I came closer, because there was a bunch oh, of people. Oh, Akon was singing at that same at Java that Jazz? Same, uh, Soul, Soul Nation. Soul, Soul Nation. Nation. Right, right. So I was there. I saw, I saw this guy. I was like, is he white? Is he not? And then I, I went closer. I looked at him. I said, Itu orang yang ada di iklan Coca-Cola. <laughs> is he white or is he not or is he what? Is he what? And I said, oh, he's so talented. He can it's, do everything. It's a kabayan. <laughs> it's a kabayan. Um, so that was that was my. So you are actually my first concert ever. Mazaze. And that was that. Ever since then, it was it was always jazz and and soul wow. and, and blues. So you have a huge impact on my music taste. Wow, that's a. So the a pivotal moment I was uh <laughs> I uh wow that, that's, that that's, was that's, that's 2000, 2008 uh but yeah, well, yeah I'm glad I was able to help uh yeah. push you in the right <laughs> direction but you know what I don't think I even pushed you in the right direction because I think if if you if you have good taste you have good taste and you'll you'll end up being yeah and you'll end up being attracted to all the you know but you, well some people say you are what you listen or you, you are what you eat right And, yeah. and I guess I, I listened to you and I was like, wow, this guy is so talented. Uh, but it's it's difficult to talk to you without talking about the past because that's that's what we know. 
Ja, ja. Passa. Oj, oj. I don't want. I don't want to talk about the past. No, me no. It's so bad. Uh. Oh, no, no, what better you talk about the future? We will talk about the future, but let's yeah. go like way, way back. Music has always been in the blood? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, uh, uh, both sides of my family love music. Yeah. My mom's side uh, was very <clears throat> a creative, uh, creative uh, family. I mean, you know, my uh, my f- grandfather was a writer, but yeah. you know, he also uh, could play violin and he could play piano, he could play guitar, and he could play mm. uh, suling. And yeah. you know, even though he didn't you know, excel at that stuff, but he could do it. You know, yeah. and, and his, you know, and his. I think I believe even his brothers played as well. His little brother Akintang, he won best vocalist for uh, for the the Asia Song Contest. I think mm. it was like before World War Two. No, no, maybe after World War Two or before World War Two. Where was I'm, this? I'm, this is Here. in Japan. Japan. Yeah, wow. yeah. So they had people from all over Asia went to Japan to have this big, you know, singing contest, and he represented Indonesia and he won. Hmm. That was Akin Tang. And lagunya ada tuh di YouTube, tapi udah lupa lagi nama nama lagunya. Oh man, what was his? I know his name as Akin Tang, but hmm. his real name was Doni. Do lupa. Oh, yeah, but hilap deh, hilap deh, hampura. Tapi, tapi berarti selalu ada. There's, there was always yeah. music in the house. Yeah, so there was so, so my grandfather. Uh, I, you know, my earliest memories were listening to. He would always be playing because he, he was stuck in Australia. Couldn't go back to yeah. Indonesia, so he was very. Uh, he loved his Sundanese music, so I was always listening to, Ois Komaria or wow. you know or. Lagu-lagu ya, Kecapi Suling hmm. Apa Degungan You know yeah. Hari ring Hari ring Eh Hari ring Bandung <laughs> Bila Leyan Ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah, All that sort of stuff <laughs> Sabi Lulungan <laughs> Was it Was it weird to, to To have that in Australia? Yeah No it felt very natural to me So and And my My parents were At work When I was very young So aku suka dititip Di rumah Aki, hmm. Aki Nini, terus kalau Nini kan kerja uh, jadi kerja di rumah sakit. Uh, as she was working as a nurse and my grandfather, uh, he, waktu itu dia, dia lagi gak kerja, dia, dia banyak nulis. Hmm. Dia, uh, dia lagi masih prolific, ya, dia baru umur berapa ya, 60-an waktu itu, 70-an kali ya. Wow. He, he died at almost 100 years old, wow. 90, 99. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Not here, right? <coughs> the Australia. Yeah, with that weather, right? Not yeah, this yeah. weather. He was one of the guys that uh, he got together with a guy called Nyoto, mm. and they made Lekra together. Okay. And then, but Lekra, when they made it, well, they wanted it to be uh, purely a cultural thing, mm. because my grandfather used to be in the pen club uh, as a writer, yeah. and he represented, you know, uh, you know, as a writer from Indonesia, he w- he went over to. To Switzerland or France, and then they, yeah. you know Europe, where they would have writers from all around the world would come, and you know uh, go to this big meeting, the Pen Club, yeah. and you know Hemingway was there, wow. and you know Jean Paul Sartre, and all these, wow. you know, all these, all these amazing writers would be there from all around the world, and and so Aki knew those guys, he'd you know meet them, met wow. them, uh, you know more than a couple of times, and he even you know met people like Pablo Neruda, you know who who was actually living in Indonesia, wow. but he was still too young for at that point, but. Uh, But uh, he he eventually met him in the pen club. And Pablo Neruda was, I think he was the cultural attaché for Chile in Indonesia in the 40s or the late 30s or wow. 40s. So books and, and music. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I, I, as you know, I, I waffle yeah. on. So yeah, books and music. And <laughs> yeah. so and then my grandmother loved Nat King Cole and you know, yeah. this sort of yeah. music. Yeah. And then on the other side, uh, my grandfather, uh, on my uh, my father's side, uh, the, this Irish yeah. and Scottish blood. So they they like to drink and sing. Yeah. Yeah. And so my dad was always singing. And the earliest memories was Sundanese music. And then when dad's mm. side, he was always playing Bob Dylan. Yeah. And early jazz and classical music. So, so it, it, it only felt natural for you to have a band in a young age. 
Uh, I always wanted to have, be in the band, but mm-hmm. not necessarily uh, lead the band. You know, I was always, yeah. I was always, you know, I'll just be in the back. You know, and bloom uh, bloom pede. You know, yeah. but uh, I, I always knew what I it was very particular about what I liked and didn't like, and then. Uh, uh, didn't, I think didn't in high you, school, huh? you, didn't you do like heavy metal stuff during high school? Yeah, in high that? school, uh, I think one day my dad came home, and he he bought a guitar, yeah. a classical guitar. He bought it in Sweet Lady Singapore, mm. and he says, hey, "Okay, everybody, sekarang ni ada ada gitar ni di rumah. Mm. Uh, dipersilakan siapa yang mau mau main. If anybody wants to, you want to play it, then dad is happy to pay for lessons." Wow. So awal awalnya kita we all took it. Oh wow, cool! Yeah, but <laughs> so we all took, kind of took lessons. So me and my sister took lessons. So how many of you? In, how many of you in the house? And she, uh, 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 I had a, a big brother, big sister, and me. Okay, so three of you took the guitar and yeah, that was in Chiputat, you know, and, yeah. uh, back in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> and so I used to play this guitar. And then uh, and my sister ended up dropping out of it, and but I I, I continued the farabi the uh, playing classical, hmm. and uh, I used to fake it. Oh, you know, my teacher was a guy <laughs> called R- Ruli Budiono, who was a beautiful guy, yeah. and uh, I, sh- I actually need to go and say hello to him because hmm. I, somebody recently gave me his number. Nee, number you, but I haven't said hello. Oh, yeah. I need to reach out, but. Uh, <clears throat> um, I used to listen to the classical uh, tapes, hmm. and you know we go to Aquarius and buy yeah, the yeah, yeah. sets. You know, oh, man, listen to these tapes. Oh, I love this. This is Bach's <laughs> fugue, or Bach, you know, yeah. Bure or whatever it's called. And and I would, uh, I would, uh, he he would put the. I say, I said, uh, Ruli, I only want to work, learn this one. He said, Okay, yeah, yeah. But I could, uh, I'll get you the sheet music. So he got me the sheet music, and I would just. Uh, figure it out by the cassette and pretend to read and he never knew i couldn't read well wait that's talent though no i guess so but you know it's kind of messed up because i wish i <laughs> re- learned how to read but that's jazz yeah m- maybe <laughs> maybe right <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> i mean improvising and everything yeah uh i can do a bit of improvising but i'm, I'm a very lazy player so yeah. i don't you know, I used to, you know, maybe uh, practice guitar about yeah. six hours a day when you were mm. just starting, right? But, yeah. but uh, now I, I, I don't practice, and I pick mm. up the guitar once every couple months, and I'm really kaku. Sekarang ini kalau main bar kordanya masih suka kram gitu ya, jempol gue. Terus, yeah. So, but uh, I love, uh, I love the blues. But yeah. I, in high school, I, I, just to come back to, to meander back to where. <laughs> <laughs> what you said that you was playing metal yeah i used to love ozzy osbourne yeah uh black sabbath and mm. iron maiden and judas priest yeah. and, and then you know when i was in smp class Atu, that's when metallica came out mm. and uh that was uh 83 84 or something wow. you know kill them all came yeah. out yeah but so so that so your future was planned your future was planned to be, I want to be a musician. It blew was that? my mind, man. I was like, no way, I got to play music, bro. I got to play, I got to rock out, man. Was that the plan? No. Randy Rhodes was my hero. Mm. <clears throat> and and then Yngwie Malmsteen came yeah. out. And I was like, God damn, this guy's crazy. <laughs> and uh, Eddie Van Halen, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, because back in those days, uh, you know, you know, we I used to read a magazine called Hit Parade. Yeah. That was like oh. the heavy metal magazine, okay. Hit Parade, and yeah. there was Cream and yeah. and Krang. And so in one of these uh, uh, interviews, Eddie Van Halen was talking about his mom. And he said that he was he was uh, from Indonesia. My mom was Indonesian, and uh, sh- her family were from, uh, where, was it? where are they from again? Rangkas Bitung. Okay. And I thought, Rangkas Bitung? Jawa Barat. Sama. Eh, orang Sunda juga, saya di Malaysia. And so, <laughs> so then, uh, I, I was really proud of that, you know, yeah. because growing up in the eighties and the seventies, in a school which was predominantly white, just mm. most of the, most of the, a lot of the students were 
uh, from the south, and yeah. a lot of them were very racist. And I, I, you know, people they call me half breed, and and they're always <laughs> like, oh, "Fucking Indians, man, I can't do anything so fucking dirty, yeah. man. They don't take showers." Yeah. It's like, well, it, was that the stigma? Oh, it was bad. <laughs> I thought that was the. I thought it was the other way around. Was that? I thought I thought bullies don't take showers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> dude, I, 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 you know, I went to school with these guys, and so, so, I was shocked, you know, because you know, yeah, can't get that And then, so when when we were like doing uh, uh, sports, yeah, they'd all take, they'd all be itching their asses out there in the sun, <laughs> you know, because you get that shit there, this shit uh, there, uh, this uh, sweat, and then yeah. and then gato, gato. Yeah. they're all like itching yeah. their ass, and then afterwards, you know, we we all hit the showers, yeah. they have skid marks. <laughs> So they call them skid marks because it's straight. Yeah, it's yeah. brown stri- straight, and, and yeah. there's something normal for yeah. them. I was like, no, this is not normal. No. You guys are disgusting. And then they would throw their skid marks around at each other as oh, a no. joke. I'd be like, ah, <laughs> it was it was very scary. So yeah, and then yeah, it used to be that you know I started getting a bit freaked out about it. Mm. So it used to be. I mean, there was actually some. I mean, I, I remember being in some places and, and they had Europeans and mm. if me and my my mother and, and my brothers and sisters got in the pool, they would jump out because they thought we were dirty because no. we were brown. No. Serious. This is how it was before. I mean. Here. Oh, this was here. Yeah, yeah. Like the, at the, uh, at the school, at the Hilton Executive Arthur. Club wow. or, or when I was at the Australian Embassy, some of the Australian Embassy, uh, Australian Embassy, Embassy people were like really racist, and they didn't like that. They, why? Why do we have to share the pool with brownies? That they didn't say it, but it was yeah, there. yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> wow. But in the meantime, I was thinking, oh no, these white dudes jumping in the thing with untabocked assholes. I'm like, <laughs> Yee! so we were jumping out. I was like, so nobody was used thinking, the pool basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't want to be in a pool that was like white people just used the pool to wash their ass. I'm like, this is disgusting. <laughs> What a conversation to have in a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, Makna coffee is very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, so, I mean, as, as I said, you you had everything planned out. You wanted to be a musician or that wasn't the case. Oh, yeah. We're talking about music, right? Not, yeah. not unwashed. <laughs> no. Glasses. Sorry, man. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so I, I've always been drawn to music, but yeah. uh, anything to do with creativity. I mean, I, I used to love to draw, you know, I used to want to be a painter. And mm-hmm. I, when I was a young kid, I, I remember seeing the, um, I think the, the Bolshoi Ballet come to town one, once, and and then also the, the Australian Ballet came, and then the San Francisco Ballet came, and I, I wanted to be a ballet dancer. Wow. Because, like, I was like, oh. Wow, Swan Lake, you know. Yeah. I saw three different companies do Swan, Swan Lake, Lake yeah. and it was just incredible. And and, I thought, and they're always different. Always different. Yeah. And then uh, the San Francisco company had a uh, an Asian lead dancer. Oh, and I think he was, a, uh, I didn't find out until much later that he ended up uh, uh, coming to America and defecting, you know, coming mm-hmm. to America to dance and then he jumped out and defected, you know, yeah. uh, sort of like that Moscow on the Hudson movie, you know, yeah. with, with Robin Williams, where he jumped out of the, and defected from the from the Russian <laughs> circus. But anyway, yeah, I, I always wanted to do something to do with whether it was dance or mm. music or arts or I just yeah. uh, was always drawn to that, you know, because I, I, I can't seem to understand, though. You were <clears throat> you were born in Australia. You moved back here and then lived in Singapore, but studied here. What, what is what was that? So well, what's was, the timeline? Okay, jadi gue dilahirkan tahun 70. Yeah. Tahun 73, 74 salah ya. Pindah ke Jakarta. Hmm. Ciputa tadi. Uh, enggak, enggak. Uh, awal-awalnya di <sighs> Jalan Cokraminoto di okay. Menteng sana. Yeah, Menteng. And then and then we went back to Indonesia in like Oh, back to Australia. Balik ke Australia tahun berapa ya? Delap- tujuh, tujuh lima. Oh, yeah. balik ke Australia. Dan balik lagi ke Indonesia. Ke Indonesia. 
ketika waktu itu mak ibu gue kan uh, she was a private secretary for Alisa Dikin. Oh, oke. Okay. Jadi Alisa Dikin kemana-mana dia pasti nempel. Yeah. My mom. And then uh, so ya yeah, gue sering nginep di rumah Alisa Dikin. <laughs> was like, Bang Ali, you know. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, I loved Bang Ali, and he he always used to come around, come yeah. to our house and f- for dinner. Wow. He was very. You owned the earth. city then, back then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, back in those days, because my grandfather, I mean, my grandfather kan waktu itu kan sempat di di dituduh komunis apa gimana? Hmm. Jadi padahal dia PSI. So, Awal awalnya kan PSI di sempat di uh, apa di dibubar disuruh bubar sama hmm. Soekarno terus. Uh, banyak yang dari PSI juga masuk penjara under Soekarno. Jadi kakek gue cabut ke Australia waktu itu uh, dia ambil beasiswa uh, to study um, literature or creative writing with at university in Sydney itu tahun berapa ya? 50-an apa ya? Anyway, he went over there to the for the Colombo plan. Mm. Remember the Colombo plan? Uh, I can't recall. That was this big thing that they would have, they would offer basis was to people okay. from from emerging nations, yeah. you know. And uh, so he went to do the Colombo plan, and then uh, Suharto came yeah. and, this, and then the whole sixty six and everything. Yeah. And then yeah, and then he couldn't come back because we're not gonna chop communists. But how the socialist is I'm a democratic socialist. I'm a communist, and. Uh, Were you in the, affected in any way? Oh yeah, yeah. We used to uh, uh, rumah kita di kita kemana-mana tuh pasti diikutin sama. So that was a huge shift. Mili- military intelligence, kayak gitu. That's a huge shift in your life. I mean, one day you're friends with Ali Sadikin and everything, and then next. Oh yeah, yeah. That uh, that was. Uh, but yeah, we, we had back in those days. Uh, all of my parents' friends were all opposisi, you know. So. Mm. Kita di, di rumah kita jadi kumpulan buat everybody like we have wow. Alisa Dikin, Profesor Sumitro, we have uh, you know that was actually Prabowo's dad, and then uh, we would have uh, you know all of the people that were at, in, involved in Malari like Rahman Toleng and Hariman Sirgar wow. and all these people used to come and hang out at our at our house and then so I always was very I grew up hearing all of these yeah. great conversations yeah. and these people yeah. had. Had really, um, uh, they were so passionate about Indonesia yeah. and about change and down with Soeharto and yeah. all this stuff. And so that, and then we used to run an underground newspaper from our house and this about to wow. ke universitas. And then once we came in, and then uh, <laughs> the fuck is we this? Had, we had the military police came into our house ransacked the place. And before they came in, my dad was like, Oh, oh shit, oh, you know, he, he took all of these papers from underneath the beds and put burnt them these, and burnt them and, and i remember being a kid i was like daddy why are you stirring the ashes he said so they can't read the ashes oh i didn't understand at the time yeah but, you know but you know when we first moved back uh, we were staying at the hotel indonesia you know we went down to eat and came up and they had ransacked our house like, uh, our room as well but we were always like being followed by military did you know what was going on and everything i was only like Four or five or six yeah. or something, but I remember, you know, some people would come to the house and mereka juga keluarin beceng juga, yeah, because they were worried that maybe they have to have a shootout with, yeah, to save Who themselves. Am, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my dad almost got killed once on a, on his riding his Vespa to Bandung. They tried to run him down, and he went down near these little lanes. And but um, yeah, but but when when my my grandfather wasn't allowed to come back until tujuh delapan. Tujuh delapan kan uh, tapol-tapol di, hmm. dibebaskan, termasuk uh, permudian antar tuer, hmm. uh, tuer, uh, and so when my grandfather came back, uh, he wanted to meet all of his old friends. So we went to we went to meet his friend that was still in jail, belum dikeluarin, uh, Hendra Gunawan, pelukis. Hmm. Pelukis. We went in there and. When we went to go see Hendra, uh, Aki Hendra, uh, he was kebetulan banget. He was karena udah saking lama, dia nggak ketemu teman-teman lama. He was drawing pictures of his friends yang yang sudah bertahun-tahun nggak ketemu wow. uh, from memory. 
and he wow. was drawing my grandfather when we walked the in there. The exact same day. Yeah, wow. yeah. And he went, ah, and then they both started crying and started hugging each other. But uh, yeah. What would you say your childhood was? Was it fun? Was it crazy? Was it? Well, it was. It was awesome because we just had. <laughs> I mean, we we used to have dinner. Like for instance, one, uh, and then when also um, when Pramudia Nantatur came out of came home when he came <laughs> home, we were there at his house because my grandfather <laughs> wanted to say this? hello. So and because my grandfather, when we went to go see oh, uh, Aki Pram. <laughs> You're saying Pramudia and Anantatur like, like Aki Pram. That's just like, I can't imagine that. <laughs> yeah, but Pram was upset with my grandfather. Why? And uh, Aki gave him $200. Who gave who? Which was who? a lot of money. Who gave who? My grandfather gave, 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 Pram. gave Pram money because he came out broke. Hmm. And he said, no, Well, they took everything he says, from him. Uh, Pram, what do you And Pram said, I don't want to do it bourgeois. Duit bourgeois lo, gue nggak mau. Seharusnya uh, lo lari ke Australia. Seharusnya lo masuk sama kita. Kalau lo believe that you're innocent, you believe in change, you believe in everything. Why didn't you take a stand with us? Kenapa lo lari ke Australia? And so, wow. so he he threw the money on the ground. I was, you know, <laughs> my grandfather was like, oh ya udah. Yeah. And so we were walking away <laughs> you from his back. place, and I thought. But he do it now. Must he on the ground? Nobody. Everyone was too proud to pick it up. Yeah, udah, gue, gue ambil. I gave it to my grandfather. He was like, he said, "Terima kasih." Yes, thank you, Jimmy. He put it back in his pocket. You know. But then we we uh. tried to make everything okay, and then we had a big dinner. Yeah. And we invited Pram and Sarah. everything was good again. Aki Mukhtar, Mukhtar Lubis, Mukhtar was Lubis, there. Yeah. Uh, Alisa Dikin came, wow. and then we all had this big dinner. Everything was going fine, beautiful. And then they started talking politics again. And yeah. then Aki Pram marah-marah lagi. Oh, wow. Marah-marah lagi. And then he says, Yara, ini rumah bourgeois. Dengan mau minum wine, bourgeois, blah, blah, blah. Segala macam, dia bilang bourgeois. And he he left. Wow. He stormed out. I Well, I only hear stories of Prabhu Diyadam Tatur. I can't imagine his anger and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, as a kid living in those in that world, yeah. um, I mean... It, why didn't you jump into politics then? Uh, or was that part of the plan? Didn't work out? Nah, <laughs> that's not me. I'm not. I'm not eloquent enough to sort of yeah. be in that world. You have to but be so to you're you're, your al- you're always used to moving from one place to to another. Yeah, go. Nah, jadi go pindahan terus. Jadi we went from. Oh yeah, then we went back to Australia in what it was it in eighty whatever, came back again mm. to Jakarta, and then we moved to Chiputat from Radio Dalam Chip, uh, Pasar Minggu, Pasar Minggu Chiputat, and then Chiputat, Ponina, and, and then back. Wow! So uh, I think my dad lost his job at the time in eighty five or something. Wow. So all of a sudden we we couldn't afford the international school mm. and. Uh, at that point, you know, okay, time to go back to Australia, guys. So we went back to Australia and then my parents came back to Indonesia. Hmm. Left and, you there. And left me and my brother and sister there. Yeah, yeah. So Okay. Umur 16, 17, I was already living alone with my brother. Wow. Which was interesting. We just smoked a lot of dope. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, you know what? Melbourne was my second weed. Oh, yeah? And I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. So I was like, this is something that I've never had before, you know? Because, like, you wouldn't have something as strong as that ever. Because it was, the f- it was oh, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, the first time. In- and I can only imagine you with your brother, no parents at that point, you know? Oh, man. Crazy things happening. Yeah, uh, my, my brother, you know, we, we, someone taught us how to make a bong out of a Galliano <laughs> bottle. So you so buy that. You a diamond it. drill, yeah. and then you just work at it until you find. And then you push it. Something numbus, yeah. and then you put the pipa in it, and then you make you, just, you get it bigger, and then. <laughs> and once we, once we made one, everyone was like, "Wow, asik banget nih bong dari mana nih?" So you know, they're like, "Ah, oh, kita bikin, oh, bikinin dong buat gue." Akhirnya we became like a fabric bong. <laughs> we were like making bongs for everybody. <laughs> uh, so when did you decide that? Okay, I'm I'm gonna go on my own now back to Jakarta. 
Oh, was that early two thousands? <laughs> So when I when I uh, was in Sydney, 1980, 1990, I, I moved to Sydney, and I played with a band band reggae, mm. uh, what's it called? Band reggae, uh, si Terus the rest of the band, orang tim tim, mm. uh, mereka anak fretilin. Jadi kalau ada party party fretilin yang buat uh, fundraising for Fretlin we would always play at all the Fretlin gigs. Wow. Nah, di situ gua jadi ke- kenalan sama semua anak-anak uh, anak-anak apa ya? Like um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, activist, you mm. know, and you know, and 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 jadi we met a lot of activists and and a lot of the activists in akhirnya jadi orang PRD, ini gue ketemu Budiman yeah. Sujat Miko ya namanya sih, yeah, yeah. lagi nih. Budiman Sujat Miko. Iya iya iya, and uh, Muktor Pak Pahan and all these mm. sort of people you ended up meeting and yeah. and Yana Ade Gusmal, eh yeah. bukan Yana nih si Ramos Horta, sempat okay. ketemu juga. But anyway, we used to play all of these reggae gigs and nah karena what uh, and I used to also play in an African band. Nah di, di band ini ada pemain gitarnya bule sama gue orang Indonesia the rest of the band orang Afrika semua kan mm. and then what uh, were you what were you playing I was playing guitar guitar okay and karena zamannya uh, itu tuh band yang mainin lagu-lagu Afrika and with with uh, anggotanya orang hitam tuh dikit banget di sini mm. jadi kalau ada band dari Afrika apa apa dari Jamaica apa, kita pasti di, apa, dapat uh, opening opening Paham, gigs. Yeah. Jadi gue banyak belajar di situ. That was my real education for mm. music was you know we would open up for Yosendur from Senegal, mm. open up for Kanda Bongo Man from Zaire, uh, Matlatine and the Mahotela Queens from South mm. Africa, the Bundu Boys from Zimbabwe. Uh, who else? Uh, we we toured like we, we we played like three or four cities with the Whalers, and that was the wow. original band of Bob Marley. Wow. Sekarang kan yeah, yeah, udah yeah, yeah. original lagi. Bob Marley and the Whalers. Ini, ini original wow. semua, kecuali drummernya Carlton Barrett udah mati waktu wow. kena tembak, dan um, of course Bob Marley juga udah nggak ada. Tapi yeah. the original guys. You played with the Whalers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, I, we we played opening up for the Whalers, yeah. and then kita tour tour itu naik bus. Like with bus them, bareng sama the Whalers. So I'll be sitting next to Family Man Barrett, or and uh, the guy that introduced Bob Marley to Rastafarianism. Uh, his name was uh, Seiko, Alvin Patterson Seiko. He was the percussionist, but he, he was, was also there. the spiritual leader of the group, wow. and he's the one that turned them onto Rastafarianism. He stayed at my house, man. He cooked food <laughs> for us, and you know, this is when I was baru umur dua puluh. Did Did you show him your bongs? <laughs> no, 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 no. He showed you his bongs. <laughs> oh, we we smoked big old fat doobies <laughs> because uh, my landlady was bandar, <laughs> and then I think she she ended up uh, somewhere uh, not nice. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. talk about it anyway. No, no, let's not talk about it. But anyway, so you, what, how did you? When did you decide to go back to Jakarta? I remember being on the bus and mm. thinking, "Oh my God, I'm, this is like Babylon by bus." You know that. <laughs> You know, Babylon by bus. You know that, that a, album, a, yeah, the live yeah, yeah, album. Yeah. I was like, "This is Babylon by bus." We're on the bus, sitting with the waiters. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, I'd be rolling these big spliffs, yeah. and uh, I'd pass them. Everybody in the band would always pass it back. But next to me, Family Man Barrett, the bassist, yeah. you hand it to him. He never hands it back. No, he's gonna finish that shit. Yeah, I'm like, how? I'm like, you know, I said, uh, you gonna aim? Uh, and he's a, like, what? Oh, you want a dot? Me thought they gave it to me. No, well, I was passing it. Me thought they gave it to me. No, I'm not, I'm not really give it to you, you know. No, what open, you can pass it back this way, you know, me see. And it never gives back. It never came back. Never came back. That's how they do it, me, I guess. After a while, I man was waiting in vain. Yes, you feel me? I don't want to wait in vain for your joint to come back to me. I don't want to wait in vain for my joint. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want I don't want to wait in vain. Ow. No, 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 I, I, no, I, I, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> terus, terus, terus. Would, would that be the craziest? Um, terus, 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 terus. Up. <laughs> terus, terus, terus. Up. Go park it. Yeah, yeah. Park it. Yeah, yeah. So was is that the craziest weed story you got? Man, we probably shouldn't even have these <laughs> conversation right now. Anyway, uh, the other day I, I did a gig in Singapore. Yeah, and I sang a song called "Sweet Marijuana Brown," <laughs> and I was like, "In Singapore, kayak gini sebenarnya nggak boleh." Apa nggak boleh? Yeah, you cannot talk about it. Yeah, and yeah. The, the word is like yeah. in public in the microphone. Well, you're not keramaian. You're not an Indonesian, so you're good. Di sini. Yeah, right. Yeah. Lo WNA kan? Contohnya. WNA. WNA. Yeah. Kan? yeah. yeah. And by the way. I'm free from all narcoba. No way I don't no touch way. anything. <laughs> nothing at all. I'm clean. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's no good, yeah. No. Adik, adik. Yeah. Kalau bisa. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for another wink. No? No? Another wink. What, what was that? Was that a wink? No? A wink? Yeah. No, there was uh, no, no. something in my eye. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, gotcha. My taku belekan. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, so, Okay. You in front of the screen. It's not, I mean, 2000s, early 2000s. You were everywhere. Oh, yeah. So, so um, you're like, how did I come back to Indonesia? Yeah. When I was playing in all those African bands, we had guys from uh, Nigeria, Igbo guys. You know, uh, the guy guy's name was, he was Igbo. And he would play his music. We have these big parties. He would play Nigerian music. Hmm. And then the guy from Ghana would play Ghanaian music. You know, the South Africans will be playing the traditional mm. You know, they'd be doing all of that South mm. African stuff. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. And do all this beautiful South African music, Zulu music and stuff. And then, and then I'd be always playing with them. And they'd be like, What's yours? Eh, Jimmy, how come? Oh, so, so we have all played our music for you. Now we want we want for you to play your music from Indonesia. I said, oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Gua ambil kaset kan. Gua ni ni degungan ni ni musik Sunda gua bawa ni ni jaipongan. Mereka bilang, I don't, I don't want to hear. I don't want him to hear the kaset. You are here. Why you don't just sing for us the song? Gua malu di situ. What did uh, you play? I can't sing it. I can't do. Eh? You can't do your own music. You told me you're from Indonesia, but you can't. You cannot. You cannot even do your own music. Why? Hmm. And here you here you can play African music, but you can't even do your. Own. <laughs> this, this guy's crazy, and so they're all laughing at me. And I was like, "Bener juga, gue malu." Akhirnya, langsung gue ambil keputusan. Gue mesti belajar musik Sunda, suling, suling, kecapi. Hmm. Jadi gue balik ke Indonesia. Terus gue coba untuk masuk di ASTI, STSI waktu itu. ASTI ya, Akademi Seni Tari hmm. Indonesia. Di Bandung, di Jalan Kopok. Tapi, I didn't, they wouldn't accept me because I didn't have the right visa. I needed a student visa. And then I said, can, just get, can I just get a student visa? They said, no, you have to apply from overseas. Yeah. And, and then blah, blah, blah. Oh, aduh. So I ended up just taking lessons at RRE instead. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Karawitan, you know, so mm. I did, uh, I can play like Catrik, Kulu Kulu, you know, it's like ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, mm. dong, ding, ding, mm. dong, ding, you know, the, uh, or either, yeah, I can play basic stuff, yeah. you know, like basic jams. But wow. but from there, I learned some Suling and Kecapi. And then, uh, and then I go pengen tahu, like, this really orang Sunda seperti apa ya? Uh, budaya Sunda and then you know I, I wanted to know budaya Sunda sebelum datangnya Islam sebelum yeah. datangnya Hindu blah blah kayak gimana kita sebenarnya tadi so, uh, in the old mandala society hmm. kan jadi oh ya udah gua ketemu orang Baduy aja so I, waktu itu gua sama teman gua si Kurt suaminya Opi hmm. <laughs> ini tahun 91 92 kayak kita naik kereta dari Gambir eh Uh, kelas kambing ke Rangkas Bitung. Hmm. Kelas kambing and then that was an experience in itself. <laughs> Cuz it's like it's it was literally it was like oh, like 200 perak or something. It was so cheap. But yeah. there was emang bener-bener ada kambing di situ, nah. ada ayam, terus yeah, ada yeah. 
macam-macam ada you know, pelacur ada well, it's like there was no toilet you know, toilet yeah. you just piss out the door or yeah. hang your butt out the door it's like it was like what man so it was very dangerous you know taking the shit it's like you have to hold on <laughs> like Kurt hold me he said Kurt's like I ain't holding you you're shit you're on your own yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, we got to Rangkas Bitung we went up to meet the Badui just for music yeah and and everybody always used to say So I always felt, ya, gue ini bule kali ya, kalau di Indonesia jatuhnya. Tapi orang Baduy nggak pernah ngomong gitu. They said, they said, uh, uh, they said nggak, kamu manusia sama sama saya. They said telinga dua, mata dua, hidung satu, mulut wow. satu. And they they never said that you were a bule or you were this or that. They were, I felt, wow, these guys are so accepting and so they hmm. were so sweet. And then I gave them my address, and sure enough, they turned up to my house. The waktu itu ibu gue lagi tinggal di Villa Delima. They went all the way. Di Lebak Bus. Yeah. Pada suatu hari, you know, uh, Satpam was like, eh, uh, ini ada orang Suku Badu. Badu. <laughs> Suku Badu ada enam orang. Dan mereka jalan kaki kan? Jalan biasanya. kaki yeah. dari, ba- dari Banten mau ketemu uh, Bang Jimmy. Ah Jimmy. Oh ya. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh ya, silakan silakan. Bawa madu, uh, bawa madu, bawa duren, yeah. bawa gula aren, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. And then the, mereka uh, uh, pada pada nyiram, <laughs> maksudnya ibak. Yeah. You know? they, they wanted to have a shower, yeah. so so they all uh, they all had a shower. And then afterwards, we gave them sweets, and they were <laughs> <laughs> but they were all so sweet. And, they, and yeah. then we traded stuff and. Barter barter kan yeah, yeah. kita kasih kain kain timur atau kain apa ya yang <laughs> terus mereka kasih kain badui yeah. kita kasih kain timur terus kita kasih kain apa lagi gitu batik batik wow garu terus mereka kasih but it was all worth it oh, it was all worth it and then yang lucu I walked out of uh, lebak bulus kan mereka minta diantarin ke rumah pemilik WS Rendra hmm. So, uh, jadi mereka nggak mau naik angkot ke rumah Umi. Harus jalan. Harus jalan. Jadi gue jalan lah dari Lebak Bulus <laughs> ke Depok gue Gila. ke Cipayung Gila. sama orang Badui. Nah mere- <laughs> mereka, jadi, mereka ba- iya. Badui 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 bule Badui Badui enggak bule Badui Badui. Soalnya <laughs> kalau mereka tuh uh, jalan selalu uh, berbaris. Iya betul. Uh, uh, like, Because they're used to Lurus, walking kan? through the hmm. forest. forest. They never walk like this. And so, they, because I'm, mereka mikir, gue yang tahu jalan, hmm. gue orang, orang kota, mereka yang ngikutin gue. Hmm. Gue keluar dari Lebak Bulus ke, ke, you know, went to the, the pasar yeah. and everything. Every bo- itu, itu, uh, kayak preman-preman setempat gitu mereka pikir gue ada ilmu, boleh ini soalnya gue rambutnya segini, yeah. gue juga pakai pakai cincin yang gede-gede tuh yeah. ya, <laughs> terus mereka pikir, woi, dia punya ilmu apa nih yeah. sampai di datangin badui, itu badui, when, iya, when when did the cameras start coming in? Uh, the cameras, oh yeah, so I mean, you. I mean. Oh yeah. So then I went back to. Uh, oh yeah. Well, terakhir I was doing something with Iwak. Waktu itu gue gue main gitar sama Iwak. Hmm. Kita bikin tour Jawa. Bukan itu sudah sembilan tiga tu waktu itu. Terus gue. Oh ya, waktu syuting videonya Humania ada dancer datang. Dancernya punya temen. Temennya Negro. Ada satu cewek. Terus akhirnya gue jatuh cinta hmm. <laughs> cewek. Akhirnya gue balik lagi ke Australia. Gue tinggal bareng tiga tahun sama ini cewek. Her name was Jenny. And then, and then, yeah, I was there for three years with this girl. And and then I was just, you know, for whatever, it didn't end up working. Ternyata nggak jodoh hmm. and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, gue pikir, wah, gue mau balik ke Indonesia. And I went to go. I had enough of this girl, and then I went to to see my my parents. Um, pada waktu itu mereka tinggal di Bali. And then when I got to Indonesia, I saw oh, sekarang ada MTV. There ada di TV kan MTV. Dulu nggak ada. Hmm. 
pas 90 kan belum ada 91. Oh, sekarang ada ya TV. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Terus gue ngeliat tuh ada Nadi Hute Galung lagi bawain acara. Terus dia bawa dia, dia bawain acara dengan bahasa Indonesia juga. Terus gue ngeliat, tapi bahasa Indonesia kok gitu ya? Sedikit kayak <laughs> ya, sedikit boleh, bolepotan boleh, yeah. gitu. Terus gue pikir, wah bahasa Indonesia gue juga. Walaupun gue juga ya, I'm not, I don't speak that good in Indonesia either. But I thought, yeah, I can speak better than her. And then, gue juga musician. Gue kenal banyak musician di Indonesia. Gue mau Saung Jabo, mau Iwan Fala. So, I mean, I know them all personally. I you hmm. know, met them and you know, you know, I played with Iwa K. I played with Krakata. I just, I just know people, you know. And I thought, you know, gue bagian juga dari scene music Indonesia. Terus gue bisa bahasa Indonesia, gue bisa bahasa Inggris. Apa mungkin gue bisa kerja di MTV kali? Ah, coba aja. Coba and aja tuh I, apa? I, I, apply. I thought maybe I'll do it. And then so apply. Uh, gue nggak apply. Jadi that after that, uh, you know, by the way, I said I didn't want to speak about MTV. And I know. Here I... we are. <laughs> and uh, and then I I, I saw uh, ada ada poster. It said pesta pelajar di. Universitas Udayana di ba- di Bali. Hmm. And I thought, oh, pesta pelajar eh, diliputin oleh MTV ya. Bakalan ada special guest Nadi Huta Galung. Gue bilang, oh. wah, mesti datang nih. Gue datang ke sana sama teman gue si Anggara. Datang ke sana, terus mau coba masuk ke belakang panggung. Gimana caranya mau ketemu si Nadia nih? Wah, tujuannya apa? Security, ya mau minta kerjaan. Oh iya, iya. Uh, Sebenarnya gue nggak terlalu mikirin juga, gue pokoknya mesti ketemu iya, iya, iya. cewek. Terus uh, securitynya ketat, nggak boleh masuk ke belakang. Bila, Pak, aku mesti ketemu Nadi. Nggak boleh, nggak boleh. Terus, oh, nggak boleh, nggak boleh. Saya, itu saya mau ketemu <laughs> ini Nadi satu galung. Oh, nggak bisa, nggak bisa, nggak bisa, nggak bisa. bisa, bisa. bisa oh, ya. Pak, Pak, please, please bilang. Wah, nggak bilang nggak bisa, nggak boleh. Oh, ya, ya. ya udah deh kalau gitu. Uh, saya ini sepupu, sepupunya Nadia. Nadia suruh, suruh saya ke sini, suruh ketem, ketemuin di belakang panggung. <laughs> Jadi kalau nggak dikasih ya udah, biar bapak, bapak aja deh yang ngomong sama Nadia, ah. bilangin uh, kasih tahu bahwa sepupunya lagi nunggu di sini. Hmm. Wah pada waktu itu kan semua cowok kan, aduh tergila-gila dengan dia. Ya. Ya. Jadi dia ngelihat Nadia, terus dia ngelihat gue, terus dia ngelihat Nadia, waduh. Ya udah dia masuk deh, dia, uh, yeah. daripada dia yang yeah. ganggu nah dia kan. Akhirnya gue dikasih masuk. I just went straight on stage and I said, dia lagi lagi sound check apa gimana. Saya, hi, my name is Jamie. You're Nadia, right? She's like, yes, I'm Nadia. Who are you? I'm like, I'm Jamie. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. So she's like, you know what? Uh, I was just wondering, uh, maybe you guys needed someone like me on your channel because I'm a prick. I'm a musician. What a prick! I speak English and Indonesian. You know, maybe I don't wow. know, maybe you could use someone like me. I don't know. She's like, you know, now's not a good time. Obviously. So, so I'm working here. <laughs> so maybe we could meet for dinner. No. Yeah, <laughs> was that was that the case? She that said that was the case. So we ended up meeting for dinner, and then I won't go into it. But anyway, long yeah. s- cut long story how short. How did you look like I that? I ended up on MTV. How, how did you look like that? Good looking boys asking for a job. I ended like up a, with the I dinner. I look like a pretty boy. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. I could imagine. But but those were the years. I mean, you were everywhere. I mean, from that from then on, you were you were everywhere on TV on ads. I mean, you had shows after twelve, right? Uh, Discovery have. show, it, sink or swim. Sink or swim. Um, but I mean, I remember after 12, it, you were all around the world. You you went, um, I mean, Bangkok, Japan, Seoul, and then sink or swim, everything. Oh yeah, sink or swim was first. Then we went to Mongolia, Tibet, uh, Japan. Was that was Philippines. that was that the top of of the top? Was that the peak of your? I that, guess that was awesome. I loved that time and uh, and. Uh, Yeah, just we went to Mongolia. We we went to Tibet. Sebelum Tibet tu, railroadnya kan mau di mereka mau jadiin Everest kan. Bangun railroad ke ya jadi yeah, yeah. dari Chengdu itu langsung ke, ke Tibet. Camp, yeah. Dulu nggak ada, no, yeah. jadi masih. Uh, and ini sebelum sebelum Olimpi Olympics di, di di China. Di China. Gitu. So they were we were invited to show that. You see, everything's okay in Tibet, you know. <laughs> and so we were, we were followed with the minders, right? So, yeah. 
but everything wasn't okay voilà. in Tibet from, from Tibet from what I saw you know people keep coming up crying <laughs> you know and uh, it was really an emotional experience being there because you know we, we, they had banned any Tibetan of, songs yeah, yeah. any form of Tibet the beauty of Tibetan culture they had banned and yet they weren't allowed to perform their their yearly uh, opera Mm. which is the Tibetan opera, La- Lama opera. And so they did this opera and they finally were allowed to, but, you know, they used to go and practice the opera in this mm. little uh, hidden valley where, away from the government and kept it alive. And wow. then they were finally allowed to perform it again after all these years since the Cultural Revolution. And I was the first <sighs> foreigner to be part of the Tibetan wow. Uh, to see it live or to be part of it to uh, be a part I, they, of it. i played a part you know, i did the dance and then wow. i i had two weeks to learn in, the, in dance. the show in the show in the potala palace and it was an amazing experience and i just broke down crying because in my head uh, i knew that where we were performing was where they massacred yeah yeah, yeah. hundreds of monks yeah and uh, we were looking at the window and in the window there was a candle and that was representing the dalai lama and you know they they had the wind was blowing it and i was just i just did the whole dance and i was looking up at the the window with the candle blowing in the wind and in this place where all the monks were massacred and all these beautiful people they were so beautiful and sweet and loving and kind and i just burst out crying what and an I experience couldn't stop crying but, but that was far away from music no Um, I mean, that's still culture. You're still into the dance, but I mean, that's you in that era. I don't think you were doing a lot about, you were doing lots of instruments or playing. Yeah, I mean, I was always writing music. Hmm. I mean, uh, I never stopped. I mean, in, in fact, the, the album that I, you know, that I, I made that LMMP, LMMP album. Yeah. When I was at MTV, all those songs were already written. Okay. Yeah. And so it was then, always in the blood anyway. Uh, yeah, I only recorded them in 2004 or something. Yeah, yeah. And then I never put it out. And then my friend said, because well, I just made a demo. Mm. And my friend said, I was like, ah, I'm going to go out of the house. I was like, I'm going to go out of the house. 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 I'm going Wow. Yeah, it took <clears throat> took you more than 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These were songs that I had written when I was 21. You know, I didn't yeah. put them out until I was 32. Would you ever go back to those days? What days? Of go- just going around the world, doing crazy shit. I'll, I'll go back to being 30 again, sure. <laughs> I'm 53. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I would love to travel the world again you know but mm. i was always upset that i couldn't bring my family well my son hadn't been born yet mm. but uh w- once i'd done after 12 uh, i think both of my children were born but you know we, we, we they were so small that we couldn't yeah. take them and travel all the time i, I couldn't no budget and i think the thing with why people enjoyed watching you is the the goofiness and the energy right don't you think so i mean going around the world with that energy You must have been on something, man. Uh, I was just high on life, you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, people were always like, oh, Well, I was kind of like, I was, uh, when you're younger, you have a different energy. And, mm. you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have the energy to be the funny guy anymore. Uh, I'll just keep all my jokes to myself. Because <laughs> when, the, when they come out, they're kind of like, yeah. Death on your dad jokes anyway. So. <laughs> so you left that life or something else happened. And I was actually going through a lot of sort of personal upheaval, like family stuff. Mm. And I won't go into it. But in, uh, it, it, I was actually very, very sad during my MTV days. I was like actually like very, very sad, you know, and very bit depressed. Mm. And so it came out. That was my therapy was to be because I was sad. I would be hyper happy. Yeah, you would. You would. Yeah. you would uh, cover it up with yeah, much lots like of energy. Say Robin Williams, you know. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that, you know. And you know, negative. Of, of I think they call the, it negative positivity or something like yeah, that, right? Something, something like that. that. Yeah. 
but I don't have that energy anymore. I mean, I'm not Mr. Funny Guy anymore. <laughs> but but that's I mean that's the I don't think that's that's something that you would want to share, right? Um, I mean, specifically about what happened or, or during those days. I mean, you said to me that we we shouldn't talk about it. And I'm sorry that we're actually talking about it now, but. Um, how did you manage from then on to go back to music and say, you know what, I'll start writing again. I'll start making uh, music again and performing again. Because that was a shift, I guess. Well, gue sih sebenarnya gue gak pernah ngerasa gue bisa nyanyi. Terus gue, gue juga main gitar pun, main instrumen pun, gue juga gak jago-jago amat. Tapi bisa, hmm. tapi gak jagoan. Skill gue gak ada. Tapi yang gue ada tuh, gue lebih menang di feel sama phrasing hmm. and ya yeah, di situ aja jadi gue mainnya di situ feel and phrasing nyanyi juga gue suara gue nggak bagus bagus amat tapi the older I get now uh, sekarang sih gue udah udah sadar bahwa oh yeah I'm actually okay and so hmm. I feel like since I hit my 50s gue lebih pede hmm. yeah mau wow, kapan took, lagi took you took you a long time to untuk merasa pede. Yeah, I was dealing with a lot of stuff yeah. and I sort of found it really hard to to uh, believe in myself and you know love yeah. yourself. And, but uh, you know I love myself now. Wow. I can actually look in the mirror and say I love you, man. You know, and I I, I really do. Uh, <laughs> but not yeah. in the, but not on those days when you were everywhere. No, man. That was those were dark days. I, I mean, I would I could I thought you would use that advantage to promote your music, quote unquote. Well, um, my problem was always a band because, you, know, you know, I was always playing music that in my head I was wanting to play music that needed drums, yeah. rhythm section. I was always, I was very particular about the yeah. this feel and beats and, and I, 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 I needed, I wanted to have the feel of, you know, the, of, of those great old soul records, which basically... You, You know, uh, sounds, you know, play with that uh, African-American yeah. feel, you know. And, it and, needs to be loud. It needs to be crazy. Yeah, it just needs to be, yeah. have that, because it, it's, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, all pop music that we know today all came out of America. And it all came <laughs> out of, ujung -ujung, yeah, you know, it came out of, you know, black culture, yeah. you know. And, yeah. Uh, Some people would say that it's you know to 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 to, to play soul music not being African American would be maybe some form of cultural appropriation or something. And <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But uh, but it's just so beautiful in hmm. the way that African Americans express themselves, which is a very African thing as well. Because having played in African bands and being exposed to all of the great maestros of African music, you know Salif Keita and mm -mm. Morikante from from uh, You know, say, uh, from from Mali and in Senegal and all these, hmm. and watching them perform, and then seeing, you know, going to Af going to LA and, you know, meeting, you know, having African American friends and seeing how they express themselves. Even though, even though a lot of them didn't realize just how African they were. No, no, fuck that, man. I'm American, man. No, hang on. But the way you celebrate, the way you yeah. express, and uh, it's very African. You know, and then. Uh, hmm. And that's what I was trying to get in my music, in my band, but I could never find that in a band, in a rhythm section in Here. Indonesia. Is that the reason that why was you, that was in the early that was in the nineties? Couldn't find it. Wow. The drummers were all too technical. No, you know everything. Everything was more skill, skill, skill. Yeah, daripada, daripada feel. And what we and what we do feel and skill, but but the money feel, but, but the money is in the skills. You know what I mean? The money is in Malayu skillful drummers, pop music, not the African feel. Yeah, didn't give a to, didn't give a fuck about that. Now there's the. I wasn't about money. I just wanted to play what I liked. That's it. You know, I mean, wow. everyone was like, You did, you did uh, do VJ Dangdut, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you did, did right? Uh, well, quite, not, not a long time though, right? Uh, yeah, I actually did do a, Yeah. Actually, I found a little clip. Oh, yeah, here's a little clip I found. Oh, yeah, here's a little clip I found. 
clips yang asik-asik This is it, this is it Quiz, oke okay, quiz pertanyaan That's it Nah kalau lo kepengen menangin hadiah asik dari warung Dangdut MTV yeah. Jawab ya pertanyaan ini, oke okay, pertanyaannya Sorry. Siapa artis dangdut favorit kamu? Huh? Gampang kan? Oke, okay, kirim cepetan jawaban kamu ke PO Box 1373 Jaka S 12130 Oke, okay, uh, gue pamit dulu, tapi sebelumnya ini ada lagu dari Lilis Karlina dengan Siapa Kau dan uh, Ngapain kamu ketok-ketok pintu lagi, malam-malam lagi Oke, okay, sekali lagi, salam dangdut Asik, sedikit nyentrik asoy Sedikit cantik asoy Cihuy Nobody wanted to take that job ya yeah? Oh, no one wanted to do it. So, awal-awalnya kan nah, dia ah, loh, nih, kita mesti uh, bikin dang dong. Ah, gak mau ah. Hmm. Norak. So, like everybody said gak mau. Tapi Sarah? Takut, takut di, takut dibilangin kampungan. Ah. Takut nih, eh, gak mau norak, gak mau ah. I said dengan bangga, I'll do it. You know, I love it. You know, so, <laughs> so I did the MTV dang dong. I had this conversation with uh, Bang Haji last week. Bang Haji Romai Rama. Oh ya? Yeah? Kenapa dangdut menjadi uh, stigma, enggak penolakan ataupun rakyat lagu rakyat gitu. It was, it was an interesting conversation, but uh, very difficult to talk to anyway. That was a different story. Um, but yeah, I, as I said early early in the podcast, um, we talked about the past, um, which which we basically hmm. know because you're everywhere. Then um, in the interviews we got we got from YouTube and everything. Um, but <laughs> but let's talk about today. I mean, we barely know what you've been up to. Um, I mean, you're not on Instagram most of the time. Um, you're not promoting here and there. Um, we know you're going to be in um, Synchronize. We know you're going to be in a festival. Juman, what about what, what's going on with your life, man, lately? Um, well, lately, lately I've been <laughs> writing you a music. That's good. No. <laughs> no. Hoping to put out some in not too long in the future. No, but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've got a few, a few new songs and, and some old songs which I haven't put out yet. And I just, uh, I've been, I've been doing a lot of jazz music mm. simply because, uh, you know, I had a good friend of mine, Dulu, Ibu, yeah was the music teacher at JIS and, and he was a very talented guy I knew from straight away. I met him, you know, we used to live together in Chiputat, mm. like in the same complex. And then we, through Facebook, I, I, I met up with him again. His name's Kelly, um, Kellen Thomas. Mm. And, uh, and then he, uh, uh, we met up on Facebook and I, I happened to be in LA and I said, look, I'm coming to LA. And he says, oh man, I'm in Arizona. I said, like, uh, we'll come see you, me and my mom. And because, so they came out and visited me because it's only a six hour drive mm. or something. And we met up and I said, I said, what are you doing now? He says, oh, I'm a professor of jazz studies wow. at Arizona State University. I was like, oh, wow. Oh man, what a pity. I, I would have loved to, if we could have done some sort of collaboration music wise. And he said, uh, and I and I said, but that's never going to happen because you're jazz and I can handle blues, but I, you know, there's no way I can sing jazz. And he says, don't 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 be like that. I know you. you you're talented. You know, we grew up together, and and I've heard you sing blues. And when was this? He when said, was this? he said, if you can sing blues, you can sing jazz. That's 2000, yeah. 2012, I think that was. Okay. And then he said, so he said, one of these days, come back and we'll make an album. So I came back in 2015, and he says, okay. Come out to Arizona and we'll make an album. So I went out to Arizona. We picked some songs, and we didn't even rehearse the band. Wow. And he said, "I said, what about the band?" He said, "Don't worry, I've got the best players. Okay, these are my brightest students." You know, the trumpet player was only sixteen, <laughs> and then the, the drummer was sixteen as well. Wow. But they played their asses off, and we 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 uh, he he stayed up all night uh, writing all of the the music out, and then the next day we went into the studio. And by three o'clock that day, we had an album. And and the guys just came in and played it first take. First take, first take, first take. And every song was just like, wow, amazing. And so, and I thought, 
oh my god i, I can't sing jazz and but he says oh yeah you can sing jazz because you can sing blues mm. and because you really you know you're a blues guy and so i approached jazz from the blues which is you know uh blues is more about feeling more about phrasing mm. and, and, and and storytelling and so that's where that's what I focus on. You know, I, I can't do the all that crazy mm. stuff, but I can tell a story when I perform yeah. and I can I can mess with the the I can I can deliver my delivery is enough to catch your attention, mm. tell you the story and uh and then I can mess with the phrasing enough to sort of ca- you know to to keep you there, you know. So you've been with jazz for the past what? Yeah, I've just really enjoyed playing yeah. jazz for since 2015. Wow. But aside from that, I mean, I I knew during the pandemic you were in Australia. Um now you're back here, but you're yeah. not here for good or are you in Singapore? We Um I'm back and forth, back and forth. I mean, uh you can't keep me away from Indonesia because it just feels, you know, it's it's home and mm. you know, I've been all around the world. Mm. I know, you know, this Indonesia. And we don't even have to go, you know, even if you go to Malaysia, I mean, bisa yeah. dibilang, yeah, mereka orang Melayu, ya. tapi lain lah. Keramahan kita, you know, like, we're just so murah senyum. And mm-hmm. even though sometimes senyum di depan, tusuk di belakang, but at <laughs> least we get that senyum in the front, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that sometimes, that's all it that's all you need to make yeah. yourself feel better and make the day go and it's it's actually very uplifting and it's yeah. i think uh we're pretty amazing people indonesians this is like like uh warts and all we're well, uh, <clears throat> we're it's unique in the world your your family did a good job in training you to know about indonesia when you were in when you were in australia how are you training your boys about this country in Australia. Well, um, because they uh, they had their formative years in Bali. We grew up in Bali. Yeah, is it? Is But they were still so small, hmm. you know. To be, you know, because I wanted them to experience the same sort of things that I experienced growing up. Main di sawah. Yeah. Cari lindung, you know, cari belut. Uh, nangkep nangkep belalang and bunglon and uh, you know nangkep ular mm. and ular sawah or whatever you know all of that stuff and nangkep capung and then putting it on the string and then yeah. until the head falls <laughs> off and but uh, all that sort of stuff so we moved to we were living in Jakarta and then we ended up said ya duh enggak kayaknya Jakarta enggak deh buat anak mm. anak kecil kasihan mereka Gak ada tempat main, so we move to Kerobokan. Nah, pas di belakang rumah, itu sawah. Hmm. Jadi, tiap hari mereka main di sawah, terus main petasan sama anak-anak Bali. Wow. And then, so so they they have that part in hmm. them. Even though si kecil, karena udah kelamaan di Australia, bahasa Indonesia sedikit kaku. Tapi dia ngerti, kalau hmm. denger. Tapi suka agak malu hmm. uh, bicara, takut salah. Uh, much like when I was younger, hmm. and I, I'd come back to Indonesia, Gue juga suka kikuk dikit ya. Yeah, uh, suka, I didn't know what to say, you know. Yeah. Is, apalagi kalau bahasa Sunda, so, aduh. Soalnya, I was afraid salah. Ntar, yeah. oh, ini mas Sunda kasar, bukan hmm. kudu atau kedah. Atau, eh, kedah, eh. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. And, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, with with my kids, basically, uh, uh, I just wish they would respect their parents more. <laughs> That's the only Indonesian side I wish they had more of. You want to say that to the camera? You're not. You're, that's that's hey, your side. Kids, respect <laughs> your parents. When we say clean up your room, clean up your room. When we say we need help with the house, tolong, please, just do it. Now, some kid, jangan banyak ting tong. Do it, okay? My goodness, susah amat. Anyway, is that what you're dealing with as a father lately? That's what I'm dealing yeah. with today. Oh, today. <laughs> my my poor wife is in in tears yeah. you know, with just dealing with yeah. just yeah well spoil get brats. that get that rotan out i mean yeah flogging time flogging oh. time yeah. <laughs> we're going to pretend this is singapore and you just we got caught spray painting <laughs> bad that, shit about the that, PAP government how you like that, that? <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, we haven't talked shit about what what's gonna happen with you, uh, which is actually the main part of this podcast. So let's let's get that covered. Um, Synchronize Fest, um, two thousand twenty three, um, day one. You're gonna be playing. Have you got anything planned? Well, um, I'm trying to get a band together. It's really hard because I've chose these guys who are playing with so many other people. And I thought, oh, I'll just get these guys to play with me because I love the way they play. But turns out they're playing with Raisa, with Rossa, yeah. with Afghan, with what, all these different players. And it's so hard to Three find... Three months away. This is so hard to find a time to practice with them. Oh, practice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I think on the 15th, we've got a workshop. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully on the 22nd, and then we'll hit the stage. Anything big planned? I'd my, I'd much rather prefer to have, you know, Latenya satu minggu penuh tiap hari, tapi ya, yeah. susah. Mm. Uh, dengan jadwal masing-masing player yang uh, yang begitu padat dengan artis-artis lain. Yeah. Jadi, I'll, I'll take what I can get. But, you know, uh, basically, gue bawain lagu-lagu original gue dari album Elemen OP yang keluar 2012. Uh, and also... Maybe some songs from the, some other songs from another, okay. uh, you know, other demos that I made, you know, because I, 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 even though I put them out over here, you know, they weren't supposed to be albums. They're supposed to be demos. Mm. But, you know, I ended up putting them out, you know. But, yeah. So, any... The any only album that I have done is the jazz one, the Trad and Soul. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's an album. The other mm. ones are demos, are demos, which I ended up... I knew As album. an album. Yeah. Okay. When are we going to have a blues album for the first time then? Wow. Nah. Is that happening? Is that There's not happening? There's so many amazing blues players in Indonesia. Uh, you know that I would love to do a blues album. Um uh you know, I've got uh, 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 I've got my buddy Rama Satre is an hmm. amazing electric blues player. Yeah. I've got, uh, and then this, and if you want to do country blues, I got my buddy Dicky Sikiawan. Yeah, he's an incredible player as well, like in the in the finger style uh, blues uh, and and slide. And for slide, I've got my buddy Stanley Bakhtian, the incredible player. And uh, I think on the twenty third, I'm going to be playing in Ijen in Ijen, Ijen Jazz uh, Festival, yeah, yeah. and I'll be singing a few songs with Gugun. Wow! And you know, there's another guy who's just. You know, there's so many yeah. beautiful players in Indonesia. When's and, yours? Uh, and and then, and so I would would love to do something with yeah. all of these cats involved. Wow, that's amazing. Well, we can't wait. Um, and and I think <laughs> last last but not least, um, thank you for doing this. Um, also thank you for Ooh, that first concert. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? I would. L- Love to be sponsored by Vox Amplifiers, if you're listening. <laughs> you got Vox Amplifiers anyway. You've bought them anyway, right? I have, but I ended up having to sell them. <laughs> I was able to do it at one stage and I sold my Vox Amplifiers. Did so, you? Yeah, yeah. And I'm, think, I'm thinking, oh, I would like to have a Vox Amplifier. So, I have a lot of manggung. I have a lot of Vox. Oh, I have a Vox, bang. I have a lot of JCM Marshall or you know uh uh Roland Jazz Chorus and yeah. I can't use those amps and I'm if the tone's not there yeah I'm going wah enggak jadi deh main gitar so how many times I've been mau manggung enggak jadi main gitar okay. karena amplinya enggak dapat yang Vox so listen to that Vox ya yeah? iya yeah, so kalau misalnya ada Vox gua pasti main Jack <laughs> soalnya tone-nya itu loh Jack <laughs> Oh, JB, thank you for doing this. Shami, shami atu shawang suna. Atur duhun, kalau gitu dapat saya Yes Lawrence. And my name is Jamie Aditya. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Day. See you at Synchronize. Oh yeah, see you, see, you, see you guys on Synchronize. Uh, day one. What time? Eh, have you got Have you got a time? Uh, ngeliat na ke mana? Kaditu. Uh, oh, kadi, uh, kaditu, kadia. Uh, so, kadia okay. tu. Synchronize, tanggal sya, hiji, di mana? Dinten, mau di, Now, Namina, the Expo, Expo, the Expo for Mayoran. Ta. We'll see you there. See ya. Okay. Thank you, JB. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. And I used to always never sing Shine On. Okay. Because I thought, ah, oh, so soppy, so ju-. But everybody loves that song. Yeah. So I'm going to sing it. Ah. Just for you. There you go.
Just for you, my baby. Okay, dang. 